I've had the privilege of being in and around banking for more than 50 years. Lots of changes during that time. We've gone from ledgers to laptops, typewriters to technology. One thing, however, remains the same. Banking is a people business, and I'll be talking with those people that make banking great here on Jack Rats with Modern Bankers. Hey, it's Thursday. Hi, Bryn. Hey, Jack. How are you? Great. All is well. LinkedIn's acting a little bit uh, slow today, but uh, hopefully uh, uh, we'll have a fast-paced program here today. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it is wonky. I got a little nervous. I couldn't look at profiles today. I couldn't. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. But it looks like everyone has wonky at the moment. So Yeah, it, it happens from time to time. So, uh, But we're, we're all good. Um, I want to talk about, I want to start by t actually talking about next week's show. Um, um, one of the things I like to do uh, toward the year end is to do uh, articles and posts on what I call books, blogs, and, po and pods. Um, and so one of the things I'd love to do next week with you is to kind of review some of the books that, uh, that have kind of been important in 2023. Um, talk about a couple of blogs that uh, that we both look at and listen to and and some podcasts as well. So uh, that'll be fun for next week. But this week, we're going to talk a, a little bit about 2024. And we're going to kind of jump back and forth around sales and uh, LinkedIn. Now, it all kind of blends in together, but there are some things you can do uh, in sales and non-sales that will really help you from an activities perspective. So I'll start with you. Tell me, talk to me about one thing that a banker could be doing in 2024 to help them um, around, integrate LinkedIn into the sales process. Yeah, so one of the things, uh, it's a three-parter one thing, but one the first parter is connect with all of your clients connect with everyone you're having conversations with. So that's the first parter. The second parter is develop your ideal persona based on who do you want to talk to? What is their geographic location? If you particularly love working in industries, all that fun stuff, make sure that you've built that ideal search. If it's in sales navigator, you've got real deep dive in identifying who those folks are. Um, if it's in the free LinkedIn, you can do it. It's not nearly as robust, but I, it's still important to do. And then number three is when you get on a call with your client, pull up that list and then add in the filter connections of their name and see the people that they know that you want to meet. And so the number one activity in 2024 that bankers need to be doing is searching and filtering all the connections of their clients, their COIs, their referral partners to, to identify who they know that, that the banker wants to meet and position themselves to get warm introductions. And not there is a lot to do, but if a, a banker simply does that, full pipeline every day of the week. Um, you know, so yeah, go ahead. I, I wanted to ask you about uh, the, the last one you talked about. Remind me again what that, oh no. So you talked about the conversation. So I, I really believe that one of the most important skills that a great salesperson have has is the ability to transition. And so if I'm on a virtual call or if I'm on a phone call with somebody and I have on my screen who their first degree connections are and, and the filtered list, et cetera, I think one of the important things is how do you address that? Mm. And so for me, it's not just um, jumping into the list, but it's a transition. It's it's kind of like, you know, hey, Brenda, as we were talking you know, you're talking about some of your clients and some of our mutual connections. I, I was thinking as I was preparing this call, you know, you and I know a lot of people in common, for example, and then I might go to the top three that I really want to talk to. 
And I will say, well, Bryn, you know Mary and John and Sam, and I'm curious how you know them. And, and gee, I'd love to be able to get to know them a little bit like you do. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's fabulous, especially when it's spontaneous. Um, you can also, uh, I guess, prime it earlier. So if you're on with a client and you're like, oh, this is a good time, that is a perfect methodology in, in bridging it. I often will be a little proactive as well. So I might reach out and say, hey, Jane, we're going to be talking next week. I hope and I, I happened to notice you're connected to quite a few people on LinkedIn I'd love to get in front of. Can we spend three minutes where I can review the names by you and get your thoughts? So that there's also um, an opportunity in advance and they're not blindsided. And, and then you could be more direct mm -hmm. because you've already said that. So I, yeah, and I, I love though, because bankers get stuck. Now I'm on a call, I didn't set it up for this to be a referral call, but based on the feedback I just got, this is the perfect time for me to get referrals. But how do I say that without being salesy and spammy? So Jack, that was perfect. That's that's a really good point. And, and you've added a new uh, a statement to my vocabulary. I've always told bankers that it's important to have urgent patience. And what I mean by that is you wake up in the morning and you say, who am I going to have a conversation with today? How can I help somebody today? How can I add some value today? And I have to do that in an urgent kind of way. As a senior manager, I have to have patience that if I'm doing the right thing as a banker, that it, it, the, that good things will happen. So uh, urgent patience. I, I like flexible consistency. I think it's really important for a, a culture to, to you know, OK, this is our culture. This is, if you play for the Cubs, this is our culture. If you work for the bank, this is the culture. However, you also need a little um, uh, flexibility because there could be some markets that you operate in that are ag markets. You could have some markets where you have a lot of market share. You could have some markets that you don't have any market share. And so you're going to act differently toward the market based on that. So flexible consistency and urgent patience. And you've added a third one to me, planned spontaneity. I really like that phrase because mm -hmm. it, it allows you to do what you said and what I said. It Because somewhere, if, if you plan it, you say, okay, I'm going to take the direct approach. That's great. If you do it my way and you do the indirect approach, I think either way, you've got to plan this. It's, there's got to be some planning around that. But let me ask you one other question of, of the three that you mentioned. We did a training program. You know, you did it virtually and I was face to face with a bank a couple of weeks ago. And as I was going around the, the bankers and, and one gentleman who had an SSI score of, uh, I think 63, which is terrific. And he did good. Have, you know, yeah. good. He said, you know, you, you asked me about all my clients. Well, I'm connected with all my clients. And then I said, yeah, what about within your clients? So what I want to know from you is sure. I connect with the CEO and the CFO. But beyond that, Bryn, if I'm a banker and I'm talking to, I'm, I want to get connected to folks in the comp, in a company, who should I connect with in the company and why? Yeah, yeah that's a great question. So the, the I'm going to go the why first and then we can talk about the who. So why do we want to connect? Lots of reasons. I'm going to give you the number one reason is LinkedIn tells us there's a 20% turnover year over year. That CFO typically will have a five-year term. So if you have five CEOs that you're talking to, one of them is leaving this year. So we need to socially surround an organization because we're at risk. A new CFO comes in, they have their own preferred bank, right? And so we need a foothold beyond just that CFO. We need to build relationships that will defend us and that will champion us when that new CFO says, hey, you know what? I want to bring in my banking relationship. And they're like, no, 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 no. We have a relationship established already, right? So that is the number re one reason why. The number two reason is um, cross solving. That's what I learned from you. I love this, right? Your CFO, they know things that are going on, but they don't always recognize 
Um, maybe that there's um, in sales, they're expecting a huge RFP to get accepted. And now they're going to have some cash flow issues to buy the inventory they need to produce whatever it is they need to sell. The CFO is not always 100% in the know about what's coming down the pipe. They know what's here based on the company. So when you have strong relationships and you're talking to sales and marketing and operations, and maybe you're talking to HR and they're saying, Hey, you know what, we're going whole heart out, uh, you know, um, in, in hiring in new areas, maybe there's, you know, a new, uh, office opening up or whatever. You have some insider information that you may never get from that CFO. So that's another why, right? And the CFO will be involved, but you're getting involved early in the process. So you can actually help them plan and say, okay, your next step is here's, we're going to go for the line of credit to solve that problem or whatever that might be. And, and I could probably come up with eight or other, eight or 10 other reasons why, but I actually think I answered both questions with who <laughs> to in that spiral of my brain. Yeah. I think that's exactly right. And and I want to talk to you when you talk about socially surround. See, so I love the words that you come up with because it, it, it really does paint a picture in my mind. If I look at the company and I'm going to go into the C-suite, I do want to socially surround myself there. I want to, I want to talk to the marketing person if they're in the C-suite. I want to, I want to make sure I connect with the HR person. And I think one of the big mistakes bankers make is they fail to connect with the executive assistant of all of these folks, mm -hmm. because a lot of them are on uh, are on LinkedIn. Um, if I'm a young banker, one of the things I need to think about is maybe the CEO, maybe I connect with the CEO if they're a client of the bank. But what I need to do, especially for prospects, is to connect with maybe lower level people in the organization, not only lower level people, but those people, I don't mean lower level in a bad way, but it's those newer bankers and newer manager this, level and below there you go that's a good that's a good way to look at it so that we can kind of grow up together there's a term that a couple of our clients use that i love it's called they're called baby bankers and if i'm a baby banker and a new new banker i don't have much of a network but i can start on linkedin so powerfully and work with those manager level and below because eventually they're either going to move up in the organization or they're going to move out and go to another that's organization right. Right. And, and when you're building those strong relationships, you're really banking on long term relationships that pay out year over year. I'm going to throw in one more that I haven't talked about in a long time. But if this is a prospect for you and you're struggling to get insights uh, and understanding potentially how their relationship with their current banker, LinkedIn and particularly Sales Navigator is brilliant at this. We can look at people that used to work in that, like we can find the past CFO, folks that used to work in the company that you're going after. And you can reach out and say, hey, Jane, um, noticed you worked at ABC a couple of years ago. I'm going to be speaking with Fred next week. I see you're connected. I, you know, I'm wondering how well did you know him and do you have any insights that you might be able to share? And by the way, do you know what bank they're using currently? Now, you could also find that out if you had RelPro. <laughs> you could also jump in and find out the banks that, that they're using. Um, so, but understanding even the culture and how they chose, maybe how they chose a bank in the past, all those things actually can be found by looking at people that used to work there that you have a connection with or you know, that they love to talk about their former employer. Yeah, that's very true. And you mentioned RelPro is one of our sponsors. I also want to uh, throw in a, a dime here for Vertical IQ because next Wednesday, Susan Bell and I are going to be on Jack Rants with Modern Bankers. And Susan's going to talk about uh, a variety of things, not directly about Vertical IQ, uh, but surrounding it and some of the issues and some success practices that her people have seen. But I want to talk about socially surround in a little different way. Um, we're going to socially surround some bankers from January 16th through about seven weeks and uh, seven consecutive weeks. And we're going to talk to them about 
some really key ways to use LinkedIn from a public workshop perspective. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, enhancing your profile and content strategies, warm market prospecting. Um, and, and we're adding, which is really cool, uh, for anybody that joins, um, they're going to get 90 days worth of one-on-one, -on -one, one on group coaching on Tuesdays at noon Eastern time. It's, it's kind of exciting, Bryn, because we just launched yesterday and today the marketing and my email is blowing up uh, with lots of people wanting to join. So yeah, I have, I have add to the list, but it's ready. It's prime time. Wait, let's see. So we want to register. And what is the link for that? The modernbanker.com slash LinkedIn sales training? I think so. Yes, correct. Okay. So I am correcting this. Wow, look at real time. This is live TV, folks. Um, oops, let me. Okay, so that the QR code is now updated. And give me a moment. And it's going to be the modernbanker.com slash LinkedIn sales training. Uh, yay. So it's uh, it's six weeks, starts January 16th. We're going to do it, I think it's uh, 2 o'clock uh, Eastern time for an hour. Uh, and um, you are going to lead this program. And I'm going to kind of walk through and maybe add a few comments here and there. One of the nice things about it is that at the end of the session, there's a bonus uh, session about Sales Navigator, which I really like. Uh, and there's going to be some changes around Sales Navigator in 24. This one is going to be uh, some of the basics of Sales Navigator, which, as we've talked about, is such a powerful program. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. And we're really going to cover um, some the essential things that bankers need to do to be successful in 2024. So, you know, bankers, your traditional sales does not change, right? The what you are doing today is absolutely vital. So none of what we're saying is stop doing this and start doing this. What we're gonna really talk about right. is how do you integrate LinkedIn, the data in LinkedIn, the, the reach of LinkedIn into your sales in a way that gets you to hello faster. Hmm. And you know that's really what this is designed to do. It's about getting to the right person. Now, is it going to be a sales hello call? Not always. Sometimes it's a networking call. Sometimes it's a, you know, I'd like to interview you for content call. Sometimes it's, hey, let, you know, I'd love to share with you some insights that might be able to help you do X, Y, and Z. There are many reasons to have a first call. So the goal of this is to start trust based conversations without being salesy. In 2024, it is the year of relationships, but not just about making new relationships, but leveraging the relationships that you have to make new friends. I want you to think about, go back to your college days. Who are your friends? You started with a roommate. And then the roommate made some, met some people and you met some people and then you introduced each other freshman year right away, right? And they're probably still your friends today. Um, but, but what happens is you meet, you, know, you meet a friend and then they bring in the other friends and they bring in the other friends. And that's all relationship driven. So when you meet that new friend of your roommate, I'm going through this with my kids, right? But when you meet this... When you, you, when you, and, and I'm talking about networking, I'm like, these are the people you're going to do business with for the rest of your life. Right. right. So, so, but what happens is they bring someone into the conversation and there's an immediate connection. It doesn't feel cold because they came in through a trusted friend. Well, this is how 2024 banking is going to go. It's about networking and sharing your friends with your CPAs and with the tax folks. So now 
in today's world, it's it's you don't have people down the hall. So we're using LinkedIn as your hallway. Your LinkedIn is the ability to search and filter your connections, connections, and allow them to search and filter your connections, and then mutually bring folks together in order to expand your relationships. Absolutely. And the other thing people often say is, well, you know, Bryn, you're on LinkedIn all the time because you'd better be on LinkedIn all the time. That's what you do. How can I, as a banker, find the time to do all of this? You developed, and we're gonna we're gonna have one session on a day in the life. Talk about that one. Yeah. So so the interesting so that we have a day in the life, and I think week five, we are deep dive focused on what to do, what to say in a in a structured process driven way that drives results that drives conversations and so i'm really excited about that but i want to back up to what you said for one second because it made me think of kind of where i stood in 1992 when i was working for dun and bradstreet because they rolled out cc mail which was email before it was email. And I was in sales and I was cold calling every day and I had a nut to make, right? Like I had to get to certain. And my manager, Marianne, calls a meeting and she rolls out CC mail, email internally. And I remember looking at my colleagues going, who has time for this? There is no way I can bring this into my daily life. This is all consuming. Now imagine not having email today. When you embrace it, it saves time. When you embrace it, you have faster, more poignant conversations. You get to hello faster. You get your point across. Although I still believe in physical mail, not everything needs to be, right? So we've got, right, we've we've got opportunities to just quickly get messages through email. You know all this. Well, I believe LinkedIn is right now in that 1992, maybe 94 spot where people say, I don't have time for this. Well, when you embrace it and you leverage it the way that Jack and I will teach you, you will have more time to do more productive things because your pipeline is filling faster, because you're getting to conversations faster, because you have more business faster. We're getting to hello faster. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. Well, it's exciting and it starts... Uh, January 16th, it goes for seven con- continuous weeks. And one of the weeks, I'm going to actually take over and do a little ranting of coaching. And so this is a real opportunity for students, and you'll be blended into our current Mastering LinkedIn for Bankers audience. But it's a good odd, uh, opportunity for students that join for $197. What a great deal. Um, to be thinking, by the way? I don't know. Well, you know, with inflation and, and all the rest of it, it's it's a good value. And so you join and you bring your ideas, you bring your success pet practices, and you bring your challenges. We have people coming every week saying things like, my headline isn't exactly what I want. Can you help me build a list? And what we do on, on those coaching sessions is actually we'll go live on LinkedIn and we'll say, okay, here's what you do. Now you go do that. And so it's one-on-one coaching, but there's an action orientation around it. So I get to do that one week, Bryn. So this will be a really exciting program. I'm I'm, I'm thrilled. Yeah, I am too. And I'm so thrilled to be doing this with you. Yeah. Um, So so remind us again, what is next week? Books, podcasts. Next week, we're going to talk about books, blogs, and pods. uh, And we're each going to bring a few books and blogs and things like that. And there might be some carryover. Uh, in it. 
And uh, but but uh, and you all bring your ideas. Uh, you know, one of the neat things about this program is it's interactive. And so bring your comments and ideas uh, and we'll we'll be happy to um, we'll be happy to talk about that. So great to see you as always um, yeah. about the 2024 and all the opportunities that we can uh, have to help bankers. And uh, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us for Jack Rants with Brim, brought to you by our good friends at Vertical IQ and RelPro. We're live on LinkedIn every Thursday at noon Eastern time, helping bankers turn connections into conversations. Don't miss an episode. Visit themodernbanker.com slash TMB podcast. Leave us a review if you would. You can also listen to this program and the new Jack Rants with Modern Bankers on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. We're on YouTube as well. Subscribe at youtube.com slash at The Modern Banker. Finally, don't forget, make today and every day a great client day.